a glob of clay doesn't mean very much in this form, does it? It has no emotion, no feelings. It does smell like farts. <laughs> but if you connect an idea to it, you can create an image. And if you can create an image, you can tell a story. And if you connect the human heart to the image, you can even change how people think. I've worked hard all of my life in art. I've done it since I was even in the crib. At least that's what my parents told me. And I've always had an aptitude for doing likenesses. But even though I achieved a very successful commercial art career, something was missing. Something that I could not connect my art to humanity. And then, after a lot of searching in the wrong places, from a very disconnected event, it all came together on 9-11, 2001. I remember we all suffered through that time. But I remember how disconnected our cultures were. The horrible actions of the few. We were make, making bold statements for the many. So I thought to myself, maybe, maybe I could put together a symbol, an educational art piece, a monument that could tell the stories of all cultures and our similarities. And not about the white culture, the black culture, the red culture, whatever. But what are those common threads between everybody? And the most simplest of those common threads that the most impactful people in history all gave themselves up for other people's benefit. And that's what began Remember Them, Champions for Humanity. So, I didn't even know how to begin this process. I started doing drawings. I started doing rough models. I didn't even know where it was going to go. I didn't know how it was going to be paid for. My entire life changed. Everything. I gave all of myself to this. And then, I just dug in and started with the Freedom March. I had the idea conceived that if I start with the heart of it, everything will grow and the right people will come to me. And that's exactly what happened. I worked thousands of hours and we even logged on the centerpiece approximately 10,000 hours but I also had to find a formula of how to create these people at their most transformational moment. Because a portrait isn't really gonna do much. You gotta capture when was that moment that they made change so that maybe we can see ourselves in these same people as well as see the people from the other sides of cultures. So I looked at what they looked, I saw what they saw, and it wasn't very pleasant. It was a very, very difficult process. And then it started to all come together. 10 years later, after thousands of hours, the first section, 20,000 pounds of bronze, and the first part of Remember Them started to evolve, the Freedom March. So I'd use this procedure for a few other characters, for all the characters, but I'm showing you a few tonight. Oscar Schindler, the most unlikely hero imaginable. I needed to know what kind of world did this man come from to really understand him, to know what he did and why he transformed. This was not easy, so I looked at what he looked at. I tried to see through his eyes. And it was not easy. Oscar Schindler, later in life, would talk about his transformational moment when he unexpectedly came across the mass execution of about 100 Jewish innocent children without any thought 
I needed to really feel what would he have looked like at that moment. I had to put myself there. So that is what becomes the image of Oscar Schindler. And you ask yourself, what would you look like? Would you be crying? Would you take action? Would you reach out? Oscar Schindler did reach out. He did make a difference. He gave an unbelievable sacrifice. He gave up all his business. He gave up his whole lifestyle. But he died knowing that he saved thousands of people from that first 1,200, the generations that would come after that. So Oscar Schindler, someone we need to know. And he is on the other side. So, that's Oscar. <laughs> Broken Promises. The great Chief Joseph of the Nez Pierce. I wanted to know about Chief Joseph. I wanted to know the world he came from. What made this man the humanitarian and champion that saved his nation? A man of humility. Every day I sculpted, I kept the words of Chief Joseph playing over and over. His closing statements to the speech that stopped the bloodshed and running away from the U.S. Cavalry. He would say some words to the effect, our chiefs have all been killed, the old people are dead, my children are freezing and starving. The people are in the hills, they have no blankets, and most of them are dead. I need time to find them. From this day forward, where the sun rises, I will fight no more forever. Those were some of the statements he made to put aside all ego, total humility, that the only thing that mattered was life. And I tried to capture what would Chief Joseph look like looking for his children and trying to save his people? So that's the face I came up with. And in the final sculpture, he's approximately 24 feet tall. This is just a little slice of him. But it is amazing what it does to you and how you feel when you immerse yourself in this life. I've found so many connections between these people that seem to be fading away. And that's another reason why I did this. The visionary who couldn't hear and couldn't see. I think I got it reversed. Helen Keller. Helen Keller was so amazing and yet we seem to be forgetting her. How would you like to wake up in a world where you're a baby and your world has not even begun and you can't see and you can't hear. <laughs> that was the world of Helen Keller. And yet, she went on to be a graduate of Radcliffe. She could communicate in five different languages. She became the unofficial U.S. Ambassador for Survivors of the Holocaust and the Atomic Bomb at Iwo Jima. What did she do that she was able to connect? And we have our sight and sound, and we question what we do. I had to really find a way to connect and know what Helen Keller's world was like. One of my proudest achievements for the Remember Them Monument is visually impaired wall so that the blind can understand what these people, these champions of life, look like. This is how I perceived Helen Keller. For 10 minutes each day, sometimes longer, I tried my best to connect with Helen. And for those minutes, the first minutes, I would sculpt with my eyes closed just to see what that was like. So I had some understanding, some connection. But that's 
became of Helen Keller, and she'll forever inspire me, and I know a lot of other people. The conscience of a country. Abraham Lincoln, 16th president of these United States. He's become more of a myth than a man. I wanted to know who the man was that had to make the most difficult of decisions, that no matter which way he would go, there would be absolute bloodshed and chaos. He was in a totally disconnected time. His own cabinet was disconnected from him, and yet he steered the course. I wanted to know what that man would look like in that moment of transformation, or call it change, that he stuck to what he believed in. And I needed to see what he saw as well. So that's Abraham Lincoln. I don't know anyone else, a world leader, who's had this much of an impact, because you have to think about it. What would have happened if he would not have stuck to his guns? What if he had not made that decision to create the 13th Amendment? And that's why he'll forever be a champion of humanity, at least to me. Now, 150 years later, after Abraham Lincoln, the fire rescuer from 9-11, I find it very extraordinary how we became so against the other cultures, so to speak. And yet, there really was something that good happened in all of that, as tragic as it was. For the weeks after 9-11, it was the one time in our country that regardless of what race, religion, or especially political view, everyone seemed to stand together. Remember Them is about that connecting with each culture. If we don't, then we're surely going to have another 9-11. So I hope we can all be connected. Thank you.